So, JB, something's happened since we left off with this 37 Buick Century. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, we uh, kind of stopped at the point at which we had rebuilt the carburetors, and we, we start, tried to start it. The fuel pump uh, was working, at least we could hear it working, but there's no fuel making it from the tank to the carburetor. So, scratched our heads and thought, wait a minute, there's got to be some sort of... Uh, obstruction in the fuel line or something because the pump was running which would tell you that uh, either it's not getting it out of the tank or that the pickup is, is plugged or that the restriction is further down the line uh, right at the end of the day when you start crossing over new and old you have to remember that um, first of all there, there'll be a point at which you have to in interface with the old in this case we put a modern fuel pump, we put a new pickup in the tank, uh, bought that at Bob's Automobilia, which is a, an excellent source of Buick parts. Um, and then we decided that instead of piecemealing the repair, which is a lot more expensive, frankly, mm -hmm. we just decided to just broom everything, start all over. So we put a new sender in the tank. We also put a petcock on the bottom of the tank. We already had a drain but that was a problem because as you opened up the drain, the gas just went all over the place. So we put a petcock on it such that we can control the flow of the fuel out of the tank so we can safely take out three or four gallons without it going all over the place. So tell me the advantage of a drain or a petcock, either one. Well, mo What's a lot the of tanks to have them, one? some tanks don't. Uh, okay. In the case of an older tank in an older car, you most definitely have to have one because in order for this problem not to keep recurring, uh, with the fuel eating up all the rubber and then the uh, various <laughs> elements of the fuel system And I guess it also failing. just gets stale too, the fuel. Yeah, and you get, you get a buildup of, uh, of uh, contaminants that build up over a period of time. Gasoline doesn't live forever, especially when it's got alcohol in it. And the alcohol causes it to degrade, so it not only degrades, but it, it also loses its efficacy. And in fact, um, most alcohol uh, additives actually do not do any good environmentally or any other way because they're less octane so you got to use more of it so it's kind of self-defeating at the end of the day the old cars that sit around that that fuel stagnates and then it, it, then it turns putrid and, and as a result then the car doesn't run properly so you want some sort of a way to, to easily drain the tank completely dry like you see it's on the bottom and there's actually a recess here right. so we can get all the fuel out and then we run the the uh, engine until the carburetor bowls run out of fuel and now we've got it completely dry and we got rid of the alcohol laden fuel. Okay, so in this case that was one thing you did as an upgrade from just a pure drain. Right. And, and so when you went fuel system front to back, right. just to pick up where we left off on that, so then you replaced the fuel pump as well? Yeah, we actually uh, took the tank down, cleaned it out, made sure there wasn't any contaminants in it, put a new sender in it, which is the, the gas indicator, right? Uh, to, to give us a signal to the uh, to the fuel gauge, yep. and then uh, we also put a new electric pump uh, on on the tank uh, uh, between the tank and the carburetors, obviously. Yeah. And then we used uh, all uh, fuel injection hose, which we've learned over time is the only hose that will last long enough to really make any sense, and it's not that much more expensive. Mm -hmm. but it has a much longer life, it's much stronger, it's much safer, uh, and so I would never put any kind of a, a regular gas hose on, on a vintage car because for that exact reason. Uh, the, the okay, it just holds up longer. Yeah, it does, it holds up indefinitely. Okay. Uh, as near as I can tell, I've had some of it 10 or 15 years, and it has a braid inside of the rubber that prevents it from cracking and falling apart. You know, fuel injection runs under much higher pressure so it has to be a much better it's quality stronger, hose. Yeah. And it works out that it's really good for old cars as well for, the, for that express reason. So you change the fuel filter as well? Yeah, we change the fuel filter. That's pretty much uh, what you'd want to do almost every time you, you know, start driving the car again because it gets contaminants. And the whole purpose of the fuel filter is to take contaminants out and keep it from getting up to the carburetor. So yeah, you want to definitely fill it as if they're inexpensive. Throw that away and put a new one on it. We like the visible type but the, the type you can't see through will work just as well. Gotcha. 
And then the uh, last component I think we found and we were messing with it a bit was the fuel regulator. Right. This, uh, you got to remember, when you put an electric pump on uh, an old car, there's two things to remember. Firstly, it has to match up with the voltage of the system you put it on. So you can't put uh, you know, a 12 volt uh, <laughs> fuel pump on a six volt battery. Obviously, that's probably not going to work very well. Right. So if you, well, we, we've converted this car to 12 volts, which means that we have to take the sensitive gauges out of the picture. Uh, things of that sort. There aren't that many of them, you know, the tail lights, the headlights, that sort of thing. You can just change that out to, uh, to, to a di a di in other words, put a protection in between the 12 volts coming into like a gauge that will only accept a six volt signal uh, safely. Uh, you can put uh, reducers on each one of those and then the rest of the system can be 12 volts. Uh, but you just put 12 volt bulbs in the front and rear and you're up, up and running. Okay. And a 12 volt battery, of course, will crank an engine a lot better. The, the starters, uh, even original starters, don't really mind a 12-volt uh, battery, even though they're made for 6 volts. It just spins the engine a little quicker and it starts the engine. It's a momentary tr uh, charge, so it's not really, not really hurting the starter. So right. really, you can convert everything to 12 volts pretty easily, but you've got to remember that there are things that cannot be 12 volts. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we get up to the front, we've got to drop the pressure coming from the pump down to uh, two or three pounds. Uh, these carburetors were never designed to handle high pressure like a modern fuel injection engine, that sort of thing. The fuel pumps will put out a considerable amount of pressure, but we don't want to end up being any more than two or three pounds. So we've got to mm -hmm. put a pressure regulator and a gauge on the, uh, on the system such that by the before it gets to the carburetors, it's down to two or three pounds. Mm -hmm. If it gets over that, it'll override the bowls inside the carburetors and it'll actually flood the engine and could actually cause an engine failure. So you definitely, definitely do not want, uh, you know, a, a 12 volts uh, uh, and high pressure pushing fuel into the carburetor because it really cannot, it's not designed to handle that. Yeah, so I guess using, first of all, using that electric pump, you now have a, a very reliable delivery. Exactly. And now by using the regulator, you, you pressure it down to the point where the carburetors are ready for it. Yeah, exactly. And then you pretty much have got an old carburetor system that works great with a modern delivery to it. Yeah, and something else as a side benefit, the starter mm -hmm. actually lives longer because it's only in play uh, for a, a shorter period of time. Some of these cars that don't start very well, you're cranking the starter, oh, yeah. cranking the starter, and it. that's really wearing out the starter. Mm -hmm. uh, if it just hits it and the engine fires because it's got fuel delivery up to the carburetor, yeah. that just saves uh, the life of the starter uh, and, and gets the car starting a lot quicker. And of course it works a lot better, especially in colder weather. Yeah. Now, since we have this up on the lift anyway, which we weren't originally planning, right? Uh, we can take a look. You mentioned the rear axle uh, differential is from a, a 60s Buick Riviera. Yeah, it's out of a 64 Riviera. Uh, and the reason we used it was because we wanted the width of the the hub to hub dimension to be right. the same because we like the original. Yeah, tires you want the wheels wheel. to land exactly where exactly. they were. Exactly. We don't want them sticking way out with some other rear end. So that it works okay. out to the '64 Riviera. And that era of Buick kept not only the width of the earlier cars, mm -hmm. but also had the same bolt pattern. So we can go oh, put great. the old wheels right back on it. Now we've got modern brakes. Yeah, I notice how big those end. drums, those are huge rear drums. Exactly, so the car stops a lot better. Um, if you go forward here, you can see that you've got, you don't have a torque tube. You have, All uh, right. you have, you have a, a con more of a conventional, more of a modern type of drive system. It almost looks like a hangar bearing up front. It is, yeah. And uh, you put a cross brace there. Exactly. And pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy there. to put in. Mm -hmm. Wasn't a lot of work to, in, to put it in, mostly because it's, it's from a Buick and uh, from another Buick, another era, Yep. but it maintains a lot of the same uh, dimensions so that we could, uh, and, and it drives so much better. I mean, it goes around a corner. You just can't imagine how this car drives. Oh man. The difference, it's, it's sitting down a little lower. Um, yeah. It's an entirely different car um, with the, the, the horsepower increase that, you know, these are, these are bigger engines. These were uh, 320 cubic, inch and w this is punched out to 350 so it's and it's got dome pistons and a lot of high performance 
types of things, two so, carburetors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's built by a master engine builder in Los Angeles. So this thing is really powerful and fast. And uh, with the modern brakes, uh, you can, I mean, you can, you can stop it as well. Yeah. Now, one more thing uh, you're attending to or going to dealing with, as far as drivability goes, was your uh, front suspension. There was right. a little bit of a problem. Yeah, the front and suspension, uh, the the bushings in the front have were worn, and so what happened was we lost uh, almost lo entirely lost one of the front tires. We replaced it at this point. But you can see here what happens when the when the bushings go out of it. The uh, the tire leans over and oh, starts wiping it's off. It's very uneven wear. It, yeah, exactly. It's wearing uh, real heavily on this part of the tire, which is the outside. So yep. you know that the, the, the tire is tucked in yep. a little bit too much. So that has to be fixed. And then we're going to put uh, new bearings in it, such that it doesn't wear out the tires like this. These are really good tires too. They're they're. Yeah, it's a shame wide, to burn up a tire like that. Radials, yeah, and they ride just exactly like a new car. Yeah, so this new tire on here, wow, that looks fantastic. Right. Putting a new tire exactly. on, exactly. So then uh, you can deal with the the kingpin issue, exactly. And then uh, theoretically, we're back to the idea of getting it on the road again. Yeah, we're getting really close um, to getting all this stuff, but you don't want to get in a hurry. And once you get it up on a lift, this is the wonderful thing about a lift, and we have. We're fortunate enough to have a single-sided lift. A lot of these lifts are double-sided, so your your access is limited. Yeah, this, this is, is also fantastic. a mobile lift, so we can actually take it out front. We can take <laughs> it across around. the shop, down the road. You know, <laughs> you, you can loan it to your to your neighbor. It doesn't really matter. It just goes wherever you want. It's got right. a, a jacking system built into it, That's so that I, we can just put it up on a floor jack. It has its own internal jack and just take it wherever we want in the shop. Lift the car, put it back down, and take it back and keep it out of the way. That's Very the other thing cool. about lifts that is kind of a pain. They they occupy space and then nothing else can go in there. This right. one doesn't do that. It and the, I couldn't speak more highly of this particular style of uh, lift. It yeah. really is, especially if, you, if you're a small operation or you're doing something at home, this is just a really yeah, great way to go. Yeah, it's low profile. It doesn't reach too high right. in the sky. Yeah, it's incredibly well designed and made. And uh, supports and, itself. Yep, and we can move it to whatever part of the shop happens to need one. Instead of having four or five of them, we can have one that just goes around and picks the car. You know, car with that up. handle at the end and the swivel reminds me of a pallet jack. That's really. exactly what it is. It has a pallet jack built into it. I see. Okay. You can't move the w around with the car on it uh, unless the car is real close to the ground. But if uh, it's so much simpler to move this thing around oh, than it is to yeah. have a, a dedicated area that's just wiped out because the posts are in the way. Yeah. So it's really a great, very cool style lift. We yeah. really enjoyed using it. Excellent. Well, uh, I'm sure everyone's going to be uh, looking forward to getting the uh, getting this thing on the road. We've been the whole goal this whole time was to, you know, clean it up, put the top down, go for a ride, and that's still the goal. Yeah, we're getting awful close. Um, it's it's, it's an exciting there. time when you're getting close, so we can take him out and uh, see if we can burn the back of these tires off. <laughs> that's, that's right. Instead, the front. Not supposed to be burning the, the front of these tires off. <laughs> That's very good. Well, thanks, JB, for you giving bet. us this update. You bet.